Hi, I'm Jared Novotny, a solutions architect on the Southeast Synergy team at Red Hat, and today I'm going to be talking to you about deploying WebLogic on OpenShift. First, let's talk about the kind of value that OpenShift is providing to businesses. This is a report from the IDC, and it shows that customers are seeing a return on investment of 636% after five years, only 10 months till payback. They're seeing more productivity, more, more features are hitting production faster, um, is requiring fewer VMs. Overall efficiency is up. Even legacy applications can benefit from the features that the platform offers, whether it's helping streamline your development process, providing scalability to your applications, or helping you meet your hybrid cloud goals by making your applications more portable. There are plenty of reasons to get started with OpenShift today. Now let's get started with the demo. I have this demo hosted on my GitHub repository, so let's go ahead and clone that down now. It's going to take a minute. Now that that's done cloning, let's cd into the project's root directory. Now we're going to deploy the WebLogic operator. The first thing we need to do is log into the OpenShift cluster from the terminal. So if you go into the upper right hand corner of the UI, you'll see a drop down menu. You'll select copy login command. You have to log in again. Click display token and you'll be given your command to log in. So this is a temporary cluster I'm going to tear down afterwards, so there's no concern with me sharing this information, but normally we'd never want to share this. Okay, now we're logged in. We're going to go ahead and create a project for our WebLogic operator. We've got our project. Now we need to create a service account. And now we're ready to go ahead and install the WebLogic operator. We're going to use a Helm chart to do this installation. This is going to take a minute. Now that the deployment is done, we can go ahead and see it in the OpenShift UI. So we go here, we check out our projects. We'll go down to the WebLogic operator project that we just created. We can look at the workloads. And now we'll see our Helm managed operator. Here's our deployment. And we can see our WebLogic operator pod is now running. So now we have deployed the WebLogic operator. Now we're going to get ready to deploy a WebLogic domain. First thing we need to do is create a project for our domain. Okay, now we have a project. Now we need to label this project to tell the WebLogic operator that it needs to manage this uh, namespace. Next we need to create our credentials for our admin. And now our project is set up for our WebLogic domain. Now we're going to build the domain image. First we need to log in the Oracle's container registry. Now we need to go ahead and download the base image that we're going to use to build our own image. Now that we have our base image, we're going to go ahead and download the WebLogic Deploy tooling to help us build our image. And now we're going to use one of the scripts from the repo to help build the application archive. Now we're going to use another script from the repo to take the application archive and our base image and build our domain image. Now that the script is done running, we have our own domain image with our application baked into it. Now we're ready to go ahead and push that image up to the OpenShift registry. First we need to make sure that the registry is exposed. Okay, and then now we need to log in to the OpenShift registry. For our password, we're going to go ahead and use a token. And a token we can get from the same place as before. Now we are ready to tag and push our image. Our 
domain image has now been pushed to the OpenShift registry. Now that the image is in our registry, we're ready to deploy our domain. We're going to create our domain using a sample definition from the repo. And you can watch as the domain gets deployed. This will take a few minutes. As you can see, we have our admin server and our managed servers up and running. We can also view them in the UI. So as you can see, our domain has been successfully deployed. Let's take a look at what we've deployed. First, we're going to need to expose the services so that they're publicly accessible. Now let's take a look at the admin console. So we're going to go ahead and get the route here on the command line, but we can also get it from the UI. You need to add slash console to the end of the URL to get there. And you're going to use your admin, uh, admin username and password that we created earlier. And here if we go into environment, servers, we can see our admin server and our managed servers. And if we come down here to services, or sorry, deployments, we'll see our test web app. Speaking of the web app, let's go take a look at that. So again, we're going to need to go ahead and get our route to the web app. So we can use that, or again, we can grab our route here from the UI. To access this, we just need to add test web app to the end of that URL. It's a very simple application. It just shows you information about the server that the application is running on. But so here you have it. So we've created our own custom domain with our own application baked into it. And it's all been deployed here on OpenShift. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process to get WebLogic up and running on OpenShift. And remember, just because you're running legacy applications doesn't mean that you can't benefit from the features that the OpenShift platform has to offer. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the demo.